We will now transform this numerical example into a graphical form model. It's convenient first to introduce the term opportunity cost. Opportunity cost, as the name suggests, reflects the cost of making choices. So when a choice is made to follow one course of action, that means that a certain amount of time is no longer available to follow an alternative course of action. Opportunity cost in this particular example then reflects the number of units of one good which is not produced as a result of making a choice to allocate one's time to producing the other good. Let's see if we can figure out what the opportunity costs are for Zoe and Amanda in this particular case. We know that Zoe, when she uses all of her time, is able to produce 18 units of fish, or she is able to produce nine units of vegetable. Consequently, if Zoe sacrifices one unit of vegetable, in the sense that she takes the time away from vegetables and allocates that time to producing fish, she would be able to produce twice as many fish as she produces vegetables. So her opportunity cost of one unit of vegetable is two units of fish. What about Amanda? Well, we know that Amanda has production possibilities or efficiencies, if you like, that enables her that enable her to produce 12 units of fish, or she could produce 18 units of vegetable by devoting all of her time to one of these activities. So while Zoe's opportunity cost of one unit of vegetables is two units of fish because she produces twice as many fish as vegetables with her time, Amanda's opportunity cost is three to two. She produces 18 units of vegetables or 12 units of fish, which is a ratio of three to two. So the opportunity costs for each of these individuals differs. Let's look at things now in graphical form. We are going to have each individual specialize in producing one of the goods rather than having each of the individuals being self-sufficient and dividing their time between the production of the two goods. So this is going to be our first graphical model. And because of their relative efficiencies, Zoe is going to specialize in fish and Amanda is going to specialize in vegetables. The graphical model that we are about to develop will have two dimensions, a vertical axis and a horizontal axis, and we will place the two goods which the individuals produce on the axes in question. So here is our graphical, here is the basis for our graphical model. We have vegetable production or consumption up here. We have fish production or consumption down here. Amanda, we said, if she devoted all of her time to producing vegetables, would be able to produce 18 units. So she could produce 18 units of vegetables and zero units of fish. Whenever we are on an axis like this, it reflects the fact that we have a certain amount of the good on the vertical axis, but zero amount of the good on the horizontal axis. As an alternative, if Amanda had devoted all of her time to the production of fish, we saw that she could have produced 12 units of fish and zero units of vegetables. As an alternative, she could have taken her time and divided it between the production of vegetables and, and fish, and she could have produced a variety of combinations of fish and vegetables, all of which are represented by the line in front of us here. We call this line 
Amanda's PPF. What does PPF refer to? PPF refers to production possibilities. So the, the first two P's refer to production and possibilities. And that should be obvious from the intercepts of the line here. Amanda, for Amanda, it is possible for her to produce 18 units of vegetable, or it is possible for her to produce 12 units of fish. So both of these points are possible production output levels for her. She could, as an alternative to specializing completely in one or the other, allocate her time so that some of her time goes to fish, some of her time goes to vegetables, and by doing that, she could produce less fish if she were to start from this point, and more vegetables. So she could produce all of these points on this line by allocating her labor in such a way as to produce both of the goods. So these are Amanda's production possibilities. Why do we use the term production possibility frontier? Well, we use the word frontier to denote the fact that there is a limit to what she can produce. She has been endowed with 36 hours of time, and consequently, that 36 hours of time puts a limit on the total amount of the goods that she can produce with the available time. In other words, she would not be able to produce a point represented or a combination represented by a point out here. A point out here would represent so many units of fish and so many units of vegetable. But since the red line defines how much of the goods she could produce with the available amount of time, by definition, she cannot produce points such as this one here. They lie beyond her production possibility frontier. We could also draw the production possibility frontier for Zoe. We know that Zoe, if she allocated all of her time to the production of vegetables, could produce nine units. And if she allocated all of her time to vegetables, she would simultaneously produce a zero amount of fish. And that is what this point here represents. Alternatively, she could allocate her time to the production of fish and reach this point here. And that point would re represent a combination of 18 units of fish and zero units of vegetable because we are on the horizontal axis. So this line here represents Zoe's production possibility frontier. It represents her production possibility frontier for the same reason that we described a moment ago when we discussed Amanda's production possibility frontier. Zoe could produce nine units of vegetable and zero units of fish, or she could produce 18 units of fish and zero units of vegetable, or she could allocate her time to produce both of these goods and consequently all of the points on a straight line in between these two extremes are available to her and consequently they represent her production possibility frontier. The example we have begun to work with is an example of what is called absolute advantage in production. What precisely do we mean by absolute advantage? And could advantage have some other interpretation? Let's look at the individual production possibility frontiers to illustrate precisely what we mean by absolute advantage. This is Amanda's production possibility frontier. She can produce 18 units of vegetable or 12 units of fish and none of the other good. Zoe can produce 
nine units of vegetable and zero units of fish, or 18 units of fish and zero units of vegetable. It is clear, I think, in this example, that Amanda has an absolute advantage. She is absolutely more efficient at producing vegetables than is Zoe. Amanda could produce 18, Zoe can produce nine. Zoe, likewise, is absolutely more efficient in the production of fish. 18, her fish capacity exceeds Amanda's capacity of 12, so 18 is absolutely a larger number than 12. So this is clearly a case where each individual has an absolute advantage in the production of one good. And that is what we will restrict ourselves to in the early stages of our economic model of trading. When we come to examine the theory of international trade, we will examine situations where one individual might be more efficient at producing both of the goods, but might be relatively more efficient at producing the other. For example, suppose it were the case that Amanda could produce as her production possibility fr frontier indicates, but that Zoe's production possibility frontier had intercepts of nine and let us say 10. This would be an example where Amanda has not only an absolute advantage in the production of vegetables, she also has an absolute advantage in the production of fish. However, her advantage in vegetables over Zoe is greater than her advantage over Zoe in the production of fish. This would be what we call a case of comparative advantage, and we will take it up in our chapter on international trade. For the moment, we restrict ourselves to cases where each individual has an absolute advantage in the production of one of the goods.